Hey folks, uh, thanks for joining another Hamski educational video. I'm Andrew of Hamski, and we'll be going through third axis today, some simple concepts to help you understand what that is and how an error can get introduced into your sighting system and why you should care as a bow hunter, as an archer. We'll be talking about these simple concepts of third axis, starting with what is third axis? Well, it's three axes and their relative orientation to each other. You might remember the XYZ coordinate frame from one of your physics classes or math classes. That's kind of what we're talking about, but we're gonna apply it to your bow sight. So let's just start with the first concept of first axis. Well, think of first axis as the vertical axis. So you go, okay, well, what's the vertical axis? Well, think of the ver first vertical axis in your bow system as your bow string. Well. So if you're, this is your bowstring, you want your sight or the rail on your sight to be set parallel with the bowstring. So that's the first axis. So why is that important? Well, it's important because once you have your first axis set, the second axis is basically the bubble vial in your housing. So that's the orientation between those two axes. You want those perpendicular because if your orientation is off, what might happen? If it's off and you move your aperture or your housing up and down on a movable site, a movable site could be a hunting or a target, your pin actually moves left and right as this moves up and down. That's gonna cause some left and right impact issues, which you don't want, and that even happens on flat ground. So what's third axis then, you might ask? Well, third axis is actually your second axis in its orientation to the arrow. Now the arrow is always pointing at the target, so you wanna make sure your bubble vial is always perpendicular to the line of sight, or the other way to think of it is the arrow. So what does that look like? Okay, well, let's take a look. So if my arrow is pointing directly at you, and this is my second axis, if my second axis is off in this direction, what happens? Well, maybe nothing yet if you're shooting on flat ground, but as soon as I shoot up and down, right? The bubble is going to run out left and right because it's not perpendicular to my arrow. If I have all that set, you say, thanks, Andrew, I got it all set. I've got a device. I put my sight in it. I put my bow in a vise. I set it all up. It's all static. It's great. And I have all three axes, uh, as you described, perpendicular. I'm ready to go. Well, I don't know about you, but Every time I have to shoot an arrow, I gotta draw my bow back. And that's the difference. You can have everything set at static or in a vise, but as soon as you draw your bow back, things change. Now, how do they change? How does that actually get realized in your bow system, whether you're target bow or hunting bow? Well, when you draw back, your bus cables actually overcome the force as you pull on your bowstring to compress the limbs. That force and those cables is applied to your cable guard or your roller guard. Because your roller guard is sticking back from the bow riser where you have your hand in it, it actually applies a torque about your bow riser. That torque ultimately makes your bow point to the right if you're a right-handed shooter. And you go, okay, um, what does that mean? Well, remember we said the third axis is your second axis perpendicular to your arrow? Well, when you're aiming, your arrow's pointing down range, but if your bow's pointing to the right and your sight's bolted to your bow and you had set this second axis orientation to be perpendicular to your arrow, now that is not correct anymore. It is shifted because your bow is now pointing to the right. That's third axis error at full draw, and that's what causes misses. That's why you have to do an adjustment to make sure that at full draw, your bubble vial is perpendicular to your arrow at the shot. You say, I, okay, well, I, you know, I've won turn my local tournaments. I've shot deer. I've shot a lot of stuff. Why, what does that matter? Well, I'd ask you ever miss. <laughs> I know I have. So, I don't want to go into any situation, whether it's competitive archery or um, bow hunting, knowing that I might have an error in my system. And to help me understand that, to help you understand that, let's talk about and try to quantify 
how much one of these errors or shifts in your torque of your bow means to you on a miss distance chart. So let's, let's uh, describe a couple of scenarios. One is a tournament scenario, one's a bow hunting scenario. In the tournament scenario, uh, one of my favorite tournaments is Redding. And uh, on target 53, it's the standing bear up in the canyon. And its distance is 57 yards with a downhill inclination of 12 degrees. Um, with the third axis air at full draw, where you really see an error is when you shoot uphill and downhill. So the further the distance, the steeper the angle, uphill or downhill, the larger the error is. Now, getting back to the example here at Redding, if I have one degree of bow torque in my system and I don't adjust for it, I don't make my, my bubble vial perpendicular to my arrow, and I shoot at that distance, I can miss by two inches. And you go two inches, okay. Well, that orange dot is four inches in diameter. So if you break two perfect shots at that distance on that target, you'll just catch the right edge of the orange dot. Now, I don't know about you, but I need every inch of that orange dot to score 22. If, you, if your system has an inherent error of two inches at that distance, you possibly, with a little other introductions of errors to include oh, lighting, footing, those kinds of things, you might miss that dot with your two arrows. And that's a quantifiable example of why third axis at full draw needs to be set correctly. So let's talk about if you're a tree stand hunter, I am, and uh, how that applies um, when you're in a tree stand. Now, what compounds that for um, a tree stand hunter, or any bow hunter for that matter, is the shorter the bow, axle to axle, the higher the poundage and the higher the let off means you're going to have more torque in your hunting bow system. If you don't believe me, screw in your target stabilizer and your hunting bow, pull it back and see how far it's pointing to the right. That all is to say that the larger the rotation or the torque in your bow system, that it's basically magnifying your miss distance if you don't have your third axis set correctly. So let's just take a shot scenario if you're in a tree stand. I'm in my tree, 15 feet up, I'll start there. The buck comes out at 30 yards. I have my hunting bow, and as I mentioned earlier, right, the more your bow torques in your hand, it's just a magnifier on how much you're gonna miss. So if you have two degrees of bow torque, if you have a one inch miss distance, you basically that goes to two inches. If you have three degrees of bow torque, that basically goes, that miss distance of one inch goes to three inches. So back in the tree might be the best buck, my personal best buck, he's quartering away. And now I got to cut a perfect shot that might have anywhere from two to four inches of inherent inaccuracy in my system. What are the chances of me making a really great impact, my arrow making an impact to make an ethical clean kill? Well, it's not very good if I have anywhere from two to four inches of error in my system. That's why it's critical to set your third axis as a whitetail hunter as well. So you're probably saying, oh, that's great, but how do I set my third axis at full draw? Well, visit our website and our YouTube channel where we'll have some very prescriptive and instructional videos on exactly how to do that. In the meantime, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next Hamsky educational video.